Francesco Borromina, by name of Francesco Castelli, was an Italian architect born in today's Ticino who, with his contemporaries Gian Lorenzo Bernini and Pietro da Quartona, was a leading figure in the emergence of Roman Baroque architecture. A keen student of the architecture of Michelangelo and the ruins of antiquity, Borromina developed an inventive and distinctive, if somewhat idiosyncratic, architecture employing manipulations of classical architectural forms, geometrical rationalists in his plans and symbolic meanings in his buildings. He seems to have had a sound understanding of structures, which perhaps Barnini and Cortona, who were principally trained in other areas of the visual arts, lacked. His soft lead drawings are particularly distinctive. He appears to have been a self-taught scholar, amassing a large library by the end of his life. His career was constrained by his personality. Unlike Bernini who easily adopted the mantle of the charming courtier in his pursuit of important commissions, Boro Minna was both melancholic and quick in temper, which resulted in him withdrawing from certain jobs, and his death was by suicide, probably because his work was idiosyncratic. His subsequent influence was not widespread but is apparent in the Piedmontese works of Camillo Guarino Guarini and, as a fusion with the architectural modes of Bernini and Cortona, in the late Baroque architecture of Northern Europe. Later critics of the Baroque, such as Francesco Militzia and the English architect Sir John Soane, were particularly critical of Borromini's work, from the late 19th century onwards. Interest has revived in the works of Borrow Minner and his architecture has become appreciated for its inventiveness. Early Life and First Works Borrow Minner was born at Bissen, near Lugano in the Ticino, which was at the time a bailiwick of the Swiss Confederacy. He was the son of a stonemason and began his career as a stonemason himself. He soon went to Milan to study and practice his craft. He moved to Rome in 1619 and started working for Carlo Modeno, his distant relative, at St. Peter's and then also at the Palazzo Barberini. When Modeno died in 1629, he and Pietro da Cortona continued to work on the palace under the direction of Bernini. Once he had become established in Rome, he changed his name from Castelli to Borro Minna, a name deriving from his mother's family and perhaps also out of regard for St. Charles Borromeo. Major works San Carlo alla Quattro Fontaine in 1634, Borro Minna received his first major independent commission to design the church, cloister and monastic buildings of San Carlo alla Quattro Fontaine. Situated on the Quirinal Hill in Rome, the complex was designed for the Spanish Trinitarians, a religious order. The monastic buildings and the cloister were completed first after which construction of the church took place during the period 1638 to 1641 and in 1646 it was dedicated to San Carlo Borromeo. The church is considered by many to be an exemplary masterpiece of Roman Baroque architecture. San Carlino is remarkably small given its significance to Baroque architecture, it has been noted that the whole building would fit into one of the dome piers of St. Peter's. The site was not an easy one, it was a corner site and the space was limited. Borro Minna positioned the church on the corner of two intersecting roads. Although the idea for the serpentine facade must have been conceived fairly early on, probably in the mid-1630s. It was only constructed towards the end of Borromini's life and the upper part was not completed until after the architect's death. Borromina devised the complex ground plan of the church from interlocking geometrical configurations, a typical Borromina device for constructing plans. The resulting effect is that the interior lower walls appear to weave in and out, partly alluding to a cross form partly to a hexagonal form and partly to an oval form, geometrical figures that are all found explicitly in the dome above. The area of the pendentives marks the transition from the lower wall order to the oval opening of the dome, illuminated by windows hidden from a viewer below, interlocking octagons. 
crosses and hexagons diminish in size as the dome rises to a lantern with the symbol of the Trinity, Oratory of St. Philip Neri in the late 16th century. The Congregation of the Filippini rebuilt the Church of Santa Maria in Vallicella in central Rome, in the 1620s, on a site adjacent to the church. The fathers commissioned designs for their own residence and for an oratory in which to hold their spiritual exercises. These exercises combined preaching and music in a form which became immensely popular and highly influential on the development of the musical oratorio. The architect Paolo Maruscelli drew up plans for the site and the sacristy was begun in 1629 and was in use by 1635. After a substantial benefaction in January 1637, however, Borromino was appointed as architect. By 1640, the oratory was in use, a taller and richer clock tower was accepted, and by 1643, the relocated library was complete. The striking brick curved facade adjacent to the church entrance has an unusual pediment and does not entirely correspond to the oratory room behind it. The white oratory interior has a ribbed vault and a complex wall arrangement of engaged pilasters along with freestanding columns supporting first level balconies. The altar wall was substantially reworked at a later date. Borromini's relations with the Oratorians were often fraught, there were heated arguments over the design and the selection of building materials. By 1650, the situation came to a head and in 1652 the Oratorians appointed another architect. However, with the help of his Oratorian friend and provost Virgilio Spada, Borromina documented his own account of the building of the oratory and the residence and an illustrated version was published in Italian in 1725, Sant' Evo alla Sapienza from 1640 to 1650. He worked on the design of the Church of Santivo alla Sapienza and its courtyard, near University of Rome La Sapienza Palace. It was initially the Church of the Roman Archigenasia. He had been initially recommended for the commission in 1632 by his then supervisor for the work at the Palazzo Barberini, Gian Lorenzo Bernini. The site, like many in cramped Rome, is challenged for external perspectives. It was built at the end of Giacomo della Porta's long courtyard. The dome and cochlear steeple are peculiar and reflect the idiosyncratic architectural motifs that distinguish Borromina from contemporaries. Inside, the nave has an unusual centralized plan circled by alternating concave and convex ending cornices leading to a dome decorated with linear arrays of stars and putta. The geometry of the structure is a symmetric six-pointed star from the center of the floor. The cornice looks like a two equilateral triangles forming a hexagon, but three of the points are clover-like, while the other three are concavely clipped. The innermost columns are points on a circle. The fusion of feverish and dynamic Baroque excesses with a rationalistic geometry is an excellent match for a church in a papal institution of higher learning. Sant'Agnese in Agonboro Mina was one of several architects involved in the building of the Church of Sant'Agnese in Agon in Rome. Not only were some of his design intentions changed by succeeding architects but the net result is a building which reflects, rather unhappily, a mix of different approaches. The decision to rebuild of the church was taken in 1652 as part of Pope Innocent X as a project to enhance the Piazza Navona. The urban space onto which his family palace, the Palazzo Pamphili, faced. The first plans for a Greek cross church were drawn up by Girolamo Reinaldi and his son Carlo Reinaldi, who relocated the main entrance from the Via di Santa Maria dell'Anima to the Piazza Navona. The foundations were laid and much of the lower level walls had been constructed when the Reinaldis were dismissed due to criticisms of the design, and Borromina was appointed in their stead. Borromina began a much more innovative approach to the façade which was expanded to include parts of the adjacent Palazzo Pamphili and gained space for his two bell towers. Construction of the façade proceeded up to the cornice level and the dome completed as far as the lantern. 
On the interior, he placed columns against the piers of the lower order which was mainly completed. In 1656, Innocent X died and the project lost momentum. In 1657, Borromina Mina resigned and Carlo Reinaldi was recalled who made a number of significant changes to Borromini's design. Further alterations were made by Bernini including the facade pediment. In 1668, Carlo Reinaldi returned as architect and Ciro Ferri received the commission to fresco the dome interior which it is highly unlikely that Borromina intended. Further large-scale statuary and colored marbling were also added, again. These are not part of Borromini's design repertoire which was orientated to white stucco architectural and symbolic motifs. The Re Maggi Chapel of the Propaganda Fied, the College of the Propagation of the Faith or Propaganda Fied in Rome includes the Re Maggi Chapel by Borromina, generally considered by architectural historians to be one of his most spatially unified architectural interiors. The chapel replaced a small oval chapel designed by his rival Bernini and was a late work in Borromini's career. He was appointed as architect in 1648. But it was not until 1660 that construction of the chapel began and although the main body of work was completed by 1665, some of the decoration was finished after his death. His facade to the Via di Propaganda Fied comprises seven bays articulated by giant pilasters. The central bay is a concave curve and accommodates the main entry into the college courtyard and complex with the entrance to the chapel to the left and to the college to the right. Other works Borromini's works include Interior of Basilica di San Giovanni in Laterano, Capella Spada, San Girolamo della Carita, Palazzo Spada, Palazzo Barberini, Santi Apostola, Naples, Filomarino Alta, Santi Andrea del Frata, Oratorio dei Filippini, Collegio de Propaganda Fide, Santa Maria dei Settiolori, Rome, Santa Maria alla Porta, Milan, Portal and Timpanum, San Giovanni in Olio, Palazzo Giustiniani, Facade of Palazzo Falconieri, Santa Lucia in Sulci, St. Peter's Basilica, Death and Epitaph. In the summer of 1667, and following completion of the Falconieri Chapel in San Giovanni dei Fiorentini, Borromina committed suicide in Rome, possibly as a result of nervous disorders and depression. In his testament, Borromina wrote that he did not want any name on his burial and expressed the desire to be buried in the tomb of his kinsman Carlo Modeno in San Giovanni dei Fiorentini. In recent times, his name was added on the marble plaque below the tomb of Modeno and a commemorative plaque commissioned by the Swiss Embassy in Rome was placed on a pillar of the church. This Latin inscription reads, F-R-A-N-C-I-S-C-V-S-B-O-R-R-O-M-I-N-I-T-I-C-I-N-E-N-S-I-S-E-Q-V-E-S Christi Q-V-I-I-M-P-E-R-I-T-V-R-A-E-M-E-M-O-R-I-A-E-M-E-M-O-R-I-A-E-M-O-R-I-A-E-M-O-R-I-A-E-M-O-R-I-A-E-M-O
VNICIPISETAEMVLISVI in PACE DOMINI QVIESCIT. It should be noted that the adjective Ticinensis used in the plaque is an anachronism. Since the name Ticino was chosen on the French model when the modern canton was created by Napoleon in 1803, honours Francesco Borro Mina was featured on the 6th series 100 Swiss franc banknote, which was in circulation from 1976 until 2000. This decision at that time caused polemics in Switzerland, started by the Swiss-Italian art historian Piero Bianconi. According to him, since in 17th century the territories which in 1803 became the canton Ticino were Italian possessions of some Swiss cantons. Borromina could neither be defined Ticinese nor Swiss, 